Hi, I'm Chef Julia Dunaway and I make whole food plant-based dishes that taste really good. At least that's what my goal is, to make them taste really good, which is often something that people who are following the whole food plant-based no oil way of eating complain that they don't think the food tastes very good. So I really have gone out of my way to make things that have a lot of flavor. Well, recently I was invited to my daughter's house for dinner and my daughter does not eat the way I do. So I didn't know what she was gonna make, but she said she would make something just for me. And I was so surprised when she made some delicious plant-based enchiladas. And I have a whole tray of ingredients of the things that were in the enchiladas. And they included beans and vegetables and a green chili sauce and a side of guacamole, which I made. And it was so fresh and tasty, but what was so amazing about it and why I want to recreate the recipe for you is it was really quick. And my daughter is a busy person. She's young, she has a busy job. She's away from her house all day. Not like me working from home, so she can't you know, spend all this time making stuff in her house and sauces from scratch. And so she goes to Trader Joe's and she gets a lot of stuff at Trader Joe's where she just, you know, combines things and canned beans and canned prepared sauces and stuff like that. So surprisingly to me, because I don't usually cook like that, everything tasted great. So I'm going to make her recipe. I wrote it down when I was at her house and kind of took notes. And of course it starts with an onion. I think I could write a book called It Starts With an Onion because so many good recipes seem to start with an onion. And I've got my 12 inch skillet heating up over here because I'm gonna get these onions, onions, garlic, zucchini, and bell pepper and lots of different things in my skillet. And the basis of this enchilada is a, it's a vegetable, bean, and tofu film enchilada. Which I'm, you know, I, I'm a pretty creative chef, but I never thought of making enchiladas stuffed with those things. And so, you know, I asked her, I said, well, how'd you come up with this recipe? And she said, well, I saw a recipe that was about making vegan enchiladas. And she said, I just kind of took the idea from there, but didn't use the recipe. And I said, okay, well, you know, she's like me. She likes to come up with her own ideas. So you hear that sizzle? That's what you want when you have something like this, you know, plant-based, no oil. You want to start with your pan sizzling a little bit because then it'll start to brown the onions and you'll develop some flavor. Now I'm going to put two nice cloves of garlic in here. And these are garlic. This is garlic I got in, in uh, Santa Fe. It's purple, some kind of red, purple, garlic grown in that local Santa Fe area and I had I wish I had bought more at the farmers market but I've been using all this garlic in everything I have a few cloves left it was pretty expensive so I couldn't believe it when I had the like seven or eight cloves of garlic and they said that would be $42 for some kind of <laughs> expensive price I thought, man, that's the world's most expensive garlic, but it's really great. And I'm growing garlic in my garden this year because I have discovered that homegrown garlic really does taste better than the garlic that's been sitting on the shelf in the store for who knows how long. So peppers, peppers and onions, we'll use about half of this bell pepper. So yeah, she's like me. She, you know, improvises with recipes. She doesn't have to have she doesn't follow recipes to a tea, which is great because I don't either. I usually make up my own stuff and I try to, you know, change it up. So people are always asking me about my recipes and I think, well, let's see. Hmm, how did I make it that time? Because I tend to make it different every time depending on what I have around and then stir it from time to time. You can, if you look at it, you can see it's got some nice little brown areas, and the, the browning is creating flavors. Now I can see it's kind of getting a little dark. So at this point, I will throw in a little vegetable broth or water, but I have this vegetable broth here to use in case I need to thin my sauce down, so I'll just use that. So I've got my bell peppers, I've got onions and garlic, 
And then it calls for about a half of a zucchini. So I'm going to throw that in there. And you know, you could use any vegetable you like. If you had some summer squash still, yellow squash, you could cut up some yellow squash. Uh, you could put um, winter squash in here. Like let's say you had some leftover butternut squash, acorn squash, pretty much anything. You know, it, it's up to you. But these are, oops. So, Cammy, my <laughs> boxer's in here. I don't know if she'll eat raw zucchini, but there's a nice little piece on the floor right under me. Um, they will eat stuff that falls on the floor, even if it's not a good idea. I was making some potatoes a couple days ago, and I dropped a couple of pieces of really hot potatoes out of the air fryer onto the floor, and both the boxers grabbed one each, the half of a potato each, and they swallowed it whole, and then a couple minutes later, they both kind of got sick. So they don't have the sense to not eat burning hot potatoes, dummies. So I hope they learn from that, but they probably didn't. All right, so I turned the heat back up. I turned it down, added the stock so that it wouldn't start burning. And then after the stock cooled things down, then I turned it back up. So now it'll keep cooking. Uh, let's see, I'm going to add a jalapeno. And that will give it a little heat. If you have people in your family, I have some people in my family that are very anti-spicy. So, you know, a lot of times I won't add a lot of heat. Like even now, I took the, I cut around the outside of the jalapeno pepper so that I didn't get all the seeds and membranes really hot part in here. Because if I do, then somebody's going to say, oh, I can't eat that. It's too hot. So and I'm trying to kind of keep it toned down a little bit. And, and to make it spicier, I'll use uh, Fresno chilies as the topping. I have some Fresno chilies from my garden. They look like this. They're not super hot, but they have a little bit of a kick, enough that it tastes pretty good. Okay, so let's put some spices in here. Well, here, let's, let's put our tofu in here. So uh, another thing that my daughter put in the enchilada filling was tofu, which I thought was kind of different. You know, I use tofu for everything, but I didn't think about putting it inside enchiladas. So this is a, a pound package of organic extra firm tofu, the kind I use for everything, the soya brand. I drained it, pressed it, and I only am using half of it. So I will put the instructions for pressing tofu in the show notes, but it's just like I press it for everything else. I wrap it in paper towels and a dishcloth put it under a cutting board with a heavy book on top, and that's it. Uh, I know they sell tofu presses. I have one, but I hate to get stuff out. I guess I'm, you know, the more stuff you get out, the more stuff you have to clean. So I'm not a, a big get everything out and have to clean it. So I like it if I can just use something readily available in the kitchen, which is a paper towel and a cloth like this. And a book so that's what I do so I've got my tofu in here we can throw in some black beans and I have a can of rinsed and drained black beans and this is Trader Joe's brand black beans they have really low sodium uh, if you are a person like me who does Rancho Gordo beans you cook up Rancho Gordo beans frequently then you could put Rancho Gordo beans in there of any kind of beans that you make Black beans work really well with this recipe, so I, I like to use black beans because it's kind of a southwest, you know, green chili kind of a thing. But any, any beans will work. So um, that was a can of beans, which is like a cup and a half of beans. Do we want to put a little salt in there? Yeah, just, you know, a couple of pinches. I don't like to put a lot of salt in my food, but I like to put a little in there. A little freshly ground black pepper is good. You don't have to add pepper to everything. Some people think that's dumb, but I like it. My father always added pepper to everything, so I guess I'm used to it growing up. Okay, and I have adobo. Adobo is onion, garlic, black pepper, Mexican oregano, cumin, and cayenne. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon of adobo seasoning. Don't overdo it because it can be a little strong. So a teaspoon is more than enough. 
And then um, my daughter added Trader Joe's 21 Seasoning Salute in addition to adobo. But I don't have that. I have something called Vamp Pepper. It's kind of a seasoned pepper, uh, garlic, onion, uh, smoked paprika, parsley, lemon peel. It's from Bam, it's from uh, Fresh Jacks. So I'm going to use that. I think, you know, pretty much any kind of seasoning mix that just gives it a little extra zing would make it taste good. So don't, you know, stress out about what kind of seasoning mix to put in this. It really doesn't matter. And it's kind of getting a little dry. So let me make sure I've got all the ingredients in it. And I think I'll splash in a little vegetable broth. Everything is in it. Oh, except for my corn. And this was corn I took out of the freezer this morning. And it was just sitting out on the kitchen counter. And it kind of defrosted. If you're using corn right out of the freezer, put a little hot water on it, like boiling water, and let it sit for five minutes. And that kind of cooks the corn. So it looks really pretty with the corn in it too. I think that gives it a nice color. So if you have any of the filling left, I'm going to put like, you know, two tablespoons of broth in there. And I'm going to set it off to the side so I can warm up my tortillas. But, um, you know, you may have a lot of leftover filling when you're done with this because we may not use all of this. Well, that's great because what I found out is the filling is good just by itself. Like you could just have a bowl of rice with that filling on top of it and then call it a bowl, like, you know, a burrito bowl. Okay, so we need to make our sauce. We'll let that filling cook a little bit longer and we'll heat up our pan to heat up our tortillas. So I've got a little skillet here and I like to heat up corn tortillas because that makes them easier to, to uh, fold. But let's get our sauce made so we have it ready. I have a bowl here. And again, like I said, the sauce is so easy. She got roasted tomatilla salsa verde from Trader Joe's, which I went and bought exactly what she had so I would make what she made. And I'm calling them Alexandra's enchiladas. So it was, it was in the refrigerator section. However, my husband gets a sauce that tastes just like that, almost identical. And he gets his at the Central Market, which is another supermarket. And it's just called uh, So Chill. And it's a brand. And it's a tomatilla salsa. So I started thinking pretty much any store-bought green salsa will work. And then she put um, a can of mild hatch chilies in hers. Well, so I thought, okay, that's good. But I'm adding a half a cup of hatch green chilies that I had from the summer because we had a lot of hatch chilies we bought from the market and we froze them after after they were um, already grilled and so I got the skins off of them and I put them in freezer bags so I would have a lot of hatch chilies to use all year so I thought well that's, this is a good way to get that extra green chili flavor in the sauce. So I added that little extra, you know, the fresher green chili. So if you didn't have that, you could use two cans of green chili. And then I'm going to put about a fourth of a cup of the vegetable stock in there to make it a little saucy. Because I like to have plenty of sauce. Not so much for me, but my husband has to have a lot of sauce on everything. He's like, you know, obsessed with sauce. I don't know why, but he's always asking me stuff like, is there any more sauce? All right, so now the filling looks like it's done. I'm going to taste it. I want to make sure there's no raw vegetable taste in it. So I'm going to take a little bite of it and see that the onions are cooked. Okay, that tastes good. The onions are cooked down. It doesn't have a raw taste. And then my pan is heating up, so I'm going to get my tortillas in here and start warming them up. I can put like three in at a time. They don't have to get really hot. They just, putting them in a warm skillet makes them a little bit more pliable. So I've got Lost Superior Yellow Corn 6-inch tortillas. They sell them at the Central Market, which is a gourmet grocery store. However, my daughter, she used the Trader Joe's brand corn tortillas. And she said she liked them because they're really thick. 
and they are really thick, but I didn't like the way they have a real strong corn smell. And I think the, the grocery store ones, they make them more frequently and they're local. So I thought, well, I'll get these because they're more like fresh corn tortillas. Nothing wrong with the Trader Joe's one, but it just depends. You know, I think, you know, either one is fine. So I'm going to turn the tortillas over and now I'm going to get my pan ready that I'm going to be putting them in. I have like a, a nice baking sheet. I'm just going to fold them directly into the baking sheet because that works fine for me. And as I use one, I'm going to put another one in my pan to keep the assembly line thing going. And I'm going to get a spoon and I'm just going to get some spoonfuls of the filling. And don't get concerned if the filling spills out into your dish. Then I'm going to roll them up and gently move them to the side. Oh, and I forgot to do this, but it's a good idea to start with a little bit of the sauce on the bottom. Anytime you're making some kind of enchiladas, you know, put a little sauce on the bottom of your tray. And then you'll have some to start with. All right, so let's get these things in here. That first one kind of buckled on me. I'm not a very neat enchilada maker. We just won't worry about it. If it, if it doesn't stay together nicely, then it doesn't. We'll do the best we can. We'll scoot it over there and hope that it works. Because once it cooks, it kind of molds together anyway. So wetting them in the sauce helps too. So I'm just kind of rolling them and pushing them to the side. And that's working just fine. So we're going to fit as many as we can in here. And when I get done with this, we'll come back and finish up by putting sauce on the top. All right, I've rolled up the enchiladas. I made two, four, six, eight. I didn't have room in my pan for more. And I was kind of running low on filling, so that was plenty. Although I have leftover filling. So I could use it to make some breakfast tofu scramble, or like I said earlier, I could do it, you know, like a, a burrito bowl. And I'm taking my sauce, and I added a little bit more vegetable broth to my leftover sauce so it would be very saucy. And now I'm going to take this and put it in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. That's long enough because the inside's already hot, the tortillas are already hot. So we don't want to cook it till it dries out. We just want to cook it for about 20 minutes to get it nice and hot all the way through. And while this is cooking, I'm going to start working on the guacamole and the other sides. So here we go. Okay, so the enchiladas are baking in the oven and I'm getting all the side dishes ready. I've got some avocados in my bowl. Let me finish, get the rest of them in here. It's just two avocados. I don't like to make too much guacamole at one time because in my opinion, guacamole is only good right after you make it. So within minutes after you make guacamole, it starts tasting not so good, I think. I would never be the person who would make guacamole in advance. And I'm, I'm taking out any little brown spots. That's what I'm doing with my spoon here. Because if you leave the brown spots in, your guacamole will be brown. So I'm just kind of um, I'm mashing it up with my fork. But I'm not going to mash it up completely. I like to leave it a little chunky. I don't like it to be, if you over mash it, then it becomes kind of, I hate to use the word in association with food, but slimy. <laughs> I don't like it that way. So I leave it really chunky. So my advice is to always make your guacamole right before you serve it. Even if people are standing there in your kitchen waiting to eat, they'll still enjoy your guacamole so much better freshly made than if you made it in the morning thinking it would be fine because that's what they do at Chipotle. 
because that is what they do at restaurants. But my experience with restaurants and guacamole is it's a lot of times kind of dark green and slimy, and it tastes terrible. It was kind of funny because my husband, when I met him, claimed that he hated guacamole. And I said, why? And he said, no, it's just disgusting. It's all slimy and tastes terrible. So I said, okay, well, I understand. So I made fresh guacamole from scratch, just like I'm doing now, right before we ate some kind of, you know, Mexican dinner. And I said, you know, try some with a chip. So I'm putting my minced garlic in here. It's just one really big clove, one of my Santa Fe garlic cloves. Uh, and so he tasted the guacamole, and he said, what did you do to this? So this really tastes good. I like this. I'm putting a, a whole lime in here. This is not a very juicy lime. Should be a lot juicier than this. Even if I had my squeezer, I don't think I could get much juice out of this lime. That's pretty sad. The world's driest lime. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I'm getting a little juice out of it, but it's still not, not the best lime I've ever had. Okay. So, uh, lime garlic, really good garlic, not old icky garlic, and salt. That's it. That makes the best guacamole. You can put brown pepper on it too if you want. You don't have to put cilantro, jalapenos, uh, whatever other things that people put. Oh, chopped up tomatoes and all kinds of other stuff in your guacamole. A simple guacamole is perfectly good. So, it, and it, you can taste the avocado. Hmm, it's really good. It needs a little more salt. I'll put some freshly ground pepper on it. So, um, you can taste the guacamole, you can taste the avocado, you can taste the fresh garlic, you can taste the lime. It tastes really fresh and delicious. And that's all you need. It doesn't need to have all that other stuff in it. Now, if it were for me, and I was the only one that was going to eat it, I would probably put chopped up cilantro, chopped up jalapenos, forget the tomatoes, and then I would, you know, eat it and have the garlic, lime, and salt. Uh, the reason I'm not putting all that other stuff in there is because my husband is going to be eating this with me tonight, and he does not like little chopped up things inside his guacamole. But anyway, my whole point about the guacamole was after that, he could not get enough of homemade guacamole. And, you know, he told me, he said, well, if I knew that it tasted like that, I would have eaten it a long time ago. He said, but it never tastes like that. So the, the key is make it right before you eat it. Even if that's a lot of trouble, you your, your guests will all stand around. With, what happens when my kids come over and I'll make a huge batch of it. And they'll all stand around the kitchen counter. They eat chips. I don't. I eat raw vegetables. They'll stand around the kitchen counter eating chips and my homemade guacamole. And I better have six or seven avocados because they'll eat all of them. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm making the toppings for my enchilada plate because I'm going to have the baked enchiladas. I have some brown rice that I just cooked earlier today, it's just plain. If you wanted to make cilantro lime rice, like, you know, chipotle style, you could put lime and cilantro on your rice and mix it up. Or you could cook it, when you're cooking your rice, you could mix in limes and cilantro, but I don't do that. I'm just using plain brown rice. And I have some scallions, some fresh chopped up cilantro, and I have my Fresno chili. And I'm going to assemble all this here shortly. So I'm going to cut up some pretty slices of Fresno chili. One thing I love about Fresno chilies is they look really beautiful, and I grow them from seeds. So if you get a hold of a nice Fresno chili, like this one here, and this is probably one I grew, it is one I grew from my garden, and you save all the seeds, you can plant those and grow your own. So this year I grew so many Fresno chili plants, I can't keep up with them. There's so many of them, I'm giving them away to people all the time. So then the other topping ingredient we have is 
cashew cream. I made this earlier. It's nothing more than soaked cashews, lemon juice, nutritional yeast, and a little bit of salt. That's all. And it looks like sour cream. You don't have to use it. You don't have to make it. I think the little creamy touch tastes really good. A dollop of that on top of the cooked enchiladas, and that's how my daughter fixed it for me. So that's how I'm fixing it for you. And then olives. These are some black olives. You know, is that authentic? Is that something you have to use? No. But, you know, it tastes good. Some people like it. Some people don't care about it. But do what you like. I don't worry about following recipes exactly because, you know, there may be things your family likes that, like that other people don't really love. So I think the black olives taste good sometimes on Tex-Mex or New Mexican food. All right, so I've got some black olives and all my other toppings, and so I'm going to go and get the enchiladas and get my plate ready, plate it up, and get ready to eat it. I can't wait. Okay, so the enchiladas are out of the oven, 20 minutes, and they look great. They're nice and hot all the way through. Now i got to get them off of my, get them out of the pan without them falling apart. That's always a trick, but just, you know, use a second spatula is kind of how I do it. I just, you know, get one for each end. You know, I'll put a little bit of the sauce that was on the bottom. It pretty much absorbs all the sauce. So if, uh, if you wanted to have additional sauce to put on top, you would have to make more. And I'm not going to. You could use a salsa if you wanted to. I'm going to get a little serving of rice. Remember I talked about using rice and then a big pile of guacamole because I like it. That's my favorite thing is plenty of guacamole. You don't have to use that much if you don't want to. And then we have some other things. I have some tomatoes from my garden. I just had them sitting out here so I cut some up. The garden this, even though it's October, things are coming back. We had a really hot summer here in Texas, and everything was doing poorly. But now that the weather's cooled down, everything is coming back. I need a little more rice on here. This looks kind of empty. All right, so then we can take some of our cilantro and put it over our enchiladas and sprinkle some scallions on, let it get over the rice too. And then remember the Fresno chilies? I think they look so pretty. And then, last but not least, remember I have my delicious cashew sauce. So I can put some of that in the middle. I like a lot of that. And it kind of got a little messy there. Oh, and the olives. Just a few of those. And there we have it. A beautiful, get a fork. It's a beautiful dish of our green chili, using hatch chilies, lots of fresh vegetables, some beans, some tofu. Mm. There's so many fresh flavors, a little heat, and super healthy. So I hope you make this whole food plant-based version of enchiladas with black bean, vegetable, tofu filling little side of rice, homemade guacamole, learn how to make that. You'll always have friends if you can make good guacamole. Make your cashew cream and just enjoy this dish. This would be great for a company dinner, for having friends over. I don't think you have to say anything about it. Just make it and everybody will eat it and enjoy it. So I hope you make this soon. Thanks for watching and come back and watch more of my videos. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.